you know, I'm constantly talking about side hustles and people always say to me, I make less than 100K a year. How am I supposed to become a multimillionaire? And I always use this example, but you know what other occupation makes less than 100K a year? Politicians. But these people have figured out a way to supplement that income by tapping into the income earning potential of side hustles. Whether we're talking about Pelosi, Rich Burr, Mitch McConnell, of these people use side hustles to supplement their income by using information that you get at your day job to then find an edge in the stock market while other people are losing money. And that money becomes passive income, by the way. And forget the stock market for a second. These people have shown that you can use your day job to make the right connections to advance your side hustle of giving speeches for a million dollars a pop with firms that you've passed legislation for at your day job. Look, I'm always saying networking is everything. It is. President Biden, for instance, had a side hustle as a practicing professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Yes. Bringing in a cool 775k a year without having to quit his day job as the vice president, making a paltry 200k. This is income that was made off the clock while other people are at the lake house or watching Netflix. These people are utilizing their connection to get their own show at Netflix. Mm -hmm. The money is there. It's just fear that's holding you back. You know, I've heard this argument before, Carl, and yes, there will be economists who write articles about finding a suspicious pattern of congressional members earning higher than average returns in the stock market. And you might just say, it's too risky. I can't take the heat. I just want to stay poor. And stay poor you will. Mm -hmm. If you are afraid of risk, turn this off right now. If you are unwilling to use your inside information that you get at your job in order to unlock financial freedom for yourself. Hey, when you open up your mind to the possibility of side hustles, you'd be surprised at how fast that cup fills up. Mm-hmm. The boys. The boys cast. The lads. The boys cast. The dudes. We pair the sun for boys cast. The bros. Yes, the boys cast. The homies. Yes, the boys cast. The dudes. Yes, the boys cast. The boys cast. This is the boys cast. And listen, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but the five late night hosts have come together. They got a podcast and I'm not happy about it. They're desperate for the Rogan bump. They want to just intrude on our territory. And I got to say, this podcast game ain't about their cuck shit. Their cuck shit don't fly over here. Okay? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. This ain't, you know, some guy sitting at home with his fat wife while she mainlines <laughs> Cheetos into her gullet. Watching him do softball interviews with celebrities. This ain't that, okay? This no. is a man's game in the this podcast world. This is a world. man's game, This yeah. is for people that were too hot for that world. You don't just screen record your Zoom call with your boys and no, be like... No, thank you. You <laughs> Danny watched it. Wasn't impressed. It's not even video. That's the crazy thing is their teaser was, go, here's some video, and then I just started listening to it today, and it's just audio. And you know what the they worst part is? They just hit the record all thing on their... And they don't talk about anything. Of course they don't talk they don't, about what anything. What are you been up to? And, and the best... They're actually, afraid. You know what's really funny? is they all took a lot of shit because they all went to the pool rooms of their house to do that yeah, video. I saw that too. <laughs> like they're they just all, like me and you, buddy. They like set design their like giant mansions, this like corner. They like just all the shabbiest shit they could find. So they're just, just, they're a just regular, regular guy. folks pulling in 28 uh, mil a year each. <laughs> You know? And you know what the worst part is? It's going to friggin' fly to the top of the charts because all yes. those those companies know how to game it, right? Yeah. Because a ton of it is, you know, new subscribers and stuff like that. So you know they're going to be f sitting on the charts yeah. like these scumbags. But I tell you what. They're giving away QR codes with the new vaccine shots or <laughs> download cards. <laughs> Free strike, strike, strike Force 5 with your booster <laughs> card QR code. So you just scan your yeah. QR code for your booster and then you scan another <laughs> QR code and it just downloads automatically. Uh, it's the same thing in COVID though. When you take these guys out of their element, when you take away the cameras, the lights, the action. The, <laughs> the 19 writers each. The 19 writers each. More importantly, when you take away John Stamos, <laughs> yeah. whatever the biggest celebrity guest you can imagine, yeah. someone probably even bigger than John Stamos, yeah. Ariana Grande. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you take away those people and you leave them to their own devices, you go, what am I watching? Tough. They're just what talking about this? fishing. Of course they are. They go, oh, I went fishing. They're not going to talk about the issues. No, how issues? You think they're going to get into it? it? I mean, this is telling you talking points, pal. First off, they don't have, they don't know what they, they're not allowed to do much, right? Like because of the strike, this is all they're really allowed to do. They're just trying to like, they're probably not even really allowed to do this. This is a bit of a loophole, a bit of a scab behavior. Well, that's the thing is, it, I guess it's not written or not produced. Wow. It's nothing. So this is, and they're like, we're just getting money from these sponsors to give to their underlings or whatever the hell. But like, they talk about, like not what's their sponsor gay.com it's literally diageo and mint mobile like they got some big money oh, I, oh, of course obviously like, they're like giving casamigos plugs and shit during the <laughs> 
because that's that's the sponsor or whatever. And they're like, talking like oh, we are sponsored by <laughs> oil, just oil in general. Exxon, all in the, all of the different yeah. oil companies have big combined. oil. <laughs> Every single different oil company has sort of come together to cut us a check oh, to, for oil. So if you're using oil this year, we recommend you use more of it. Honestly, I'm sure they're all electricity like, has sponsored us because the, the the main money is coming from the these the title sponsors i'm sure in their mind they're like i really hope people don't watch this. it's a real mask off scenario here that's what I'm, that's yeah. what that's what i, was I mean it was it was it also during covid but like it was more acceptable because everybody's like what's going on right now it was, now a, little, you're it like, was a little quirkier yeah now you're like what what, what are, are you doing you, what are you do? you guys can't write i mean it's true if you don't if you don't use it you lose it and this is very evident watching their podcast <laughs> It is a completely different game, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna say the, I'm the line the opinions. I'm gonna be a politician essentially yeah, at my yes. job of telling people opinions. I don't work that much, but not you know talking you, about anything. If you want to be a politician, this is what you do: you take your shirt off, <laughs> you post selfies it's and videos. Balls. Every, this is another thing, and I'm not just trying to be on a rant here, but every politician now thinks it's their the move. Like, it's sort of their looking quirky. Yeah. They're posting all these thirst traps. Yeah. Like, what is going on? I know. The fact that, I mean, RFK. I signed up for Chris Christie's OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's only burgers that he just burgers. fucking mainlines in the <laughs> sex machine, that Chris Christie. He's a feeder. It's a bit of a feeder. Yeah, he's a scenario. feeder, but he looks in the it's, mirror. It's niche. He's a feeder, but he's a ma- he also only, he's asexual, so he, mast- he just masturbates and feeds. <laughs> he's like, looks in the mirror, and he goes, fucking eat that burger. Yeah, you do, you fat fucking cow. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. Well, I guess, what, okay, the RFK thing, I'll take it a little bit when he was posting the shirt off, because he's at least sort of saying, I'm 70 years old, and I still and look I'm good. I'm fit. Vivek just turned his page into a fucking cringe factory. Yeah, dude. this guy's out here. Thirties. Vivek is just like straight up. Like his new photos are like, here's my tricep. Yeah, I didn't realize he was only five foot seven though. That pretty much. I didn't dis- realize that. So either. crazy that that just like disqualifies you to be president. Why does that disqualify you? I mean, there's never been one under six. Say it to Johnny's face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like I don't know. It's just that's a rule of the presidents. Is it? There's just they're never like yeah. I remember in high I had a high school teacher tell me that when I was in high school. They're like yeah, they're all over six foot tall. And so all you little short bastards in grade I mean, four. I'm, I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just saying it just seems to be some sort of rule. I mean, I don't. An, think, I don't run. think he's gonna be the president anyway. No. But like the shirt off behavior is in fucking insane, dude. Yeah. Yo, just, <laughs> if Trump posted a fucking shirt off, although I would think I'd like that. Cool. No, if he came out of jail, <laughs> no, what he should do is come out of jail and just have the shirt unbuttoned, like so, just straight up, yeah, like yeah, a Hawaiian. Yeah. And he's just—I feel like no, that would be like. I sort think of he a comes out move. in the jumpsuit. He goes, "I didn't even change." I did, yeah, exactly. Jumpsuit, I, I'll tell jumpsuit. you what. On the topic of, you know what? Sort of just get like a plug in so early, but we do have a new shirt. So if you want to go to theboyscast.com, we're going to be releasing shirts, and we we released our first Fine, couple. Yeah. We have a couple cool ones, but also the first also official at, boys cast also at theboyscast.com, which is fourth wall, because our patreon.com we're like 150 away from the next episode of our TV series. If you want to go watch the first one there, as well as a b- b- billion bonus episodes. Yep. But some people that have a problem with Patreon, we're going to post all the Patreon episodes up theboyscast.com which is our fourth wall so if you want to go there you can sign up and support us there and also uh, there's a new shirt there um, you know yep. what while we're doing plugs fuck it I'm on the road fuck New it! York is fucking sold out you yep. can't come Tacoma Vancouver Kansas Omaha Edmonton I added a lot of dates and I haven't brought them up on this show for a while yet Los Angeles Irvine last one we did it was fucking banging oh, yeah. San Jose Phoenix Toronto which is more than half sold out now Perrysburg Columbus Liberty Dallas Baltimore Winnipeg San Diego <laughs> And Danny, where are you going to be again? September 9th in Poughkeepsie. Okay. Yeah, catch me there. Actually, that'll be sick. But, yeah. so, the mask mandates are back. And we talked about this a little bit with Jimmy Dore, right? Yeah. But I was sort of deep diving into it because so in Vic, this is a Canada thing, but in Vancouver, basically, they legitimately have a bunch of people that are lined up outside of a clinic and they're doing an actual protest. Crazy. But the protest is... It's like it's legit. I thought it was like you go. This is like a bit. Like I, I, that's what I thought. I go. This is some some it's like internet tricksters are doing something and they're gonna trick us into reporting. Yeah, having a sign that says we need a bedtime. Of course, like, just wear one yourself. But then we we cover it and then people go, gotcha. Yeah, it, right. That's what I'm worried about with these things. Then you look into them and go, no, this is pretty real. Right. So they the, they have a bunch of people. The Dorcases of the year. <laughs> you have to be so fucking. At this point, so to be protest, out there, yeah. it's like, yo, 
The, so you sure what, what's your argument for the rest of time? Yeah, and even the like, it's you know, the, even the, the Taylor like, Lorenz fake rule. news media is out there being like, yeah, it's not that bad, and the masks don't really do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and even still. I mean, the thing is, they. Can, I feel like this is what I was sort of saying before, but I think they can get the girlfriends involved because girls, I think they'll eat the slop and the propaganda. I think men on mass, you're gonna have a very hard time getting the fucking dudes. But they the also masks beat on up again. a guy at that protest. <laughs> a guy got beat up. <laughs> well, they're fucking so fucking filled to the brim with TDS. Yeah, yeah, are... they're so. But it's not even. It's like TDS, but they're in Canada. <laughs> it's like they have like a TDS with a U or something, but they just beat. I don't know. They beat some guy up. And, and also, just... if you feel so unsafe that you're at the point where, listen, I'm so hyped up about this stuff that I like, I want everyone to wear masks. I don't want to leave my house. Like, what are you doing out at a protest? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not in your? I mean, bubble? they're all masked up. Lock outside, yourself in a basement, six feet distance at the protest. <laughs> Protesting six feet distance is pretty funny. <laughs> well, I don't know. Give us a bedtime. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what they're. I no longer feel safe accessing blood work. So this girl wants to go give blood, and she says she can't go to the hospital because there's not enough. They keep calling himself disabled. It was. It really is because all of this stuff came out. How like this stuff was terrible for kids. Remember that article? I don't even think we ever did it, but I had it written down. COVID masks stop people from smiling. Yeah. So they basically are doing a <laughs> this fucking. I mean, they Smart literally person. like like they so they like reduce like children's development. Like, actually. well, that's what it is. But this person was like a pretty good hustle. They're basically giving lessons on how to smile again. <laughs> Yeah, when I do it, I'm a piece of shit when I tell women to smile on the street. You, should, you, need, to give, you need to give Ron DeSantis those lessons. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen him. <laughs> but so the lessons, they give people lessons on how to smile again. It's 55 bucks a session. You show up and they show you how to do a Hollywood smile, they said. Construction workers do that shit for free. What do you mean? <laughs> Construction workers do give you your yeah, smile they lessons. They've been giving away. Come on, baby, ear to ear. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's what they do. They just yeah. sit you there and they whistle at you. Hey, pretty, pretty. <laughs> That'll be fifty-five bucks. So they've already had a bunch of stuff like this come out where there's like all the problems, and then it was pretty much they most of the. I feel like consensus even on the like. Frady Cat yeah. side was kind of like masks didn't really do that much. Yeah, and I mean, look, like obviously they wear masks in hospitals. I'm sure there's certain settings where they're like, yeah, we'll wear them here, but they're for them to be like, hey, we just need masks everywhere. Like, it's crazy. It's not happening. Yo, it's just not happening. Yo, they propaganda these people so much that they're outside like protesting to like have their fucking. Well, I guess they because they're like we want masks all the time, and then they did get it, but it was taken from them. So now they they're had like, their thing. they were like, well, we could <laughs> theoretically get it back. We did have it. Yeah, that's it's not true. like we never had it. We did have it, so we just have to get it back. These are 100% the people that would be protesting, you know, like cur like protesting curfew stopping, Yeah. protesting like, hey, you're allowed to travel from state to state, and they'd be like, we shouldn't be allowed to travel from state to state. Absolutely not, and you should not be allowed <laughs> to fly unless you're vaccinated and bring back the vaccine passports. I just imagine, I don't know any of these people in real life. I've heard they exist, but like, yeah. I can't, like, who are they? Who are they? What are their no lives look like? Like, I, don't know. I guess they're on Reddit's in their forums being like, hey, I just left the house to, you know, uh, saw the sun for the first time in five years, I mean, hated it, I'm back in the garage. Yeah, they read the CBC. A lot of them lot. post shit that they go, my husband, like, can you believe this? My husband went to a funeral. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 and didn't wear a mask, and he's, they're still quarantining. Fully like, cooked. Like, if you go to, like, the U.S. or whatever. embarrassed to be that person. Like, probably, like, if they live in Canada and, like, their partner goes to, like, the United States, like, they have to quarantine for two weeks when they come back. They quarantine for the next two years. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Sebastian Maniscalco needs to have a word with these people. Aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> How are you not embarrassed to be out I of that protest? Embarrassed? It's one thing if you want to be like, like kind of low key in your little den, For sure. talking to your boyfriend, being like, "I wish they must just again." Yeah, like, you want to be a mole? Yeah, if you want to be a mole it, person, like go for it. But you're a they loud and proud mole. COVID. Yeah, exa that's exactly what it is. You're out there loud and proud about being a mole, and it's weird. Yeah, I guess the world adapted weird. to you for that small period, so then you're like, sure. They had the they mole got rules. Taste. They got a taste of what if everyone was a mole. It's like if the mole <laughs> world and the regular world like combined, they got a taste of it, and they go, that's not bad. What if the what whole world bad? was moles? <laughs> you're crazy. It can't happen. They got a, it was, or maybe that vitamin D just like kind of invigorated them a bit, and they go, we want some of that back, but we need these rules. Right. They, they were like, we need mole rules. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they, need, they, they, they can have the first mole candidate. <laughs> <laughs> 
The yeah. mall people no. will not be <laughs> kept in their garages anymore. We want masks for everyone. The mall people will reign pure again. Yeah. They're mall supremacists. They better not fucking pull that shit here. That's all. I don't, don't think it would. I mean, they, I, I, I said this day two of COVID, but like you can make all the rules you want. I'm not doing them. No. You, it's me back in. It was COVID was me back in, you know, high school again. I ain't doing it. Yeah, but I mean, with like with the flying and stuff, when they're like, won't let you on a. Well, obviously, you had to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, well, they're not going to let you in the airport or I on did a plane. Obviously, yeah, obviously yeah. I was And then you know you could like, rules. and then you could be like the dissenters where you go like, uh, can I get two packs of pretzels, please? And then you're just eating a pretzel like this the whole time. No, you know I was getting in trouble for fucking taking the of mask off, man. You know what I was about, dude? Constant. Of course. Me okay, too. so, but on the same topic of just like, I guess this is more mole people kind of thing, yeah. but I, we have sort of a tap. So Jordan Peterson, <laughs> so Theo Vaughn's like in tour, on tour in uh, Canada, right? Yeah. And a couple of our buddies are on tour and uh, he was, he did his podcast and our, me and Danny's close friends who we lived, we basically had a studio with in Toronto and like we'd film the TV series with and like just our boys, yeah, right? Yeah, our boys, yeah, yeah. Our, our basically they're, they're our squad. Guys. Yeah, we had like our comedy squad and then our like film squad that we had the office with and that was all our boys. So they they did uh, the Jordan Peterson. They got Theo brought Va into, yeah, at they this did like the, studio. Yeah, they did the Theo Vaughn Jordan Peterson interview because he interviewed him when he was in Toronto and it was just like a huge fucking hoopla. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know any, like I just saw it and I go, oh, that was pretty cool because they're in this like super weird like psychedelic well you're not a mole person psychedelic fairy den is where, where it was for uh, Theo's podcast yeah and not, one of our not, bodies is like tapped into that studio or whatever and then it became like an enormous thing <laughs> where everyone was like I f I, I'm gonna feel unsafe because Jordan Peterson Jordan was on was premises. in the building <laughs> he was in the building yeah yeah I feel like they could they could sense him you know what I mean they're in the bathroom and they just like a chill came over their body oh, yeah, they go, oh, like, <laughs> it's like a shudder what's going on in here cool right? wind in the middle of summer <laughs> they felt the cool wind to the other side and they were filming their like NPR style thing over the other side yeah, yeah for, of course that two yeah, people yeah. are gonna listen to it's all like tons of like you know LGBT trans people they were they can't believe that they were he, filming a uh, he would come the Jimmy this. Kimmel podcast reaction <laughs> podcast just like they talk about how good it was how good it was yeah they're like <laughs> they can't believe he entered their space it's so crazy they're like it's like it's really like he tainted it for them so I'll read this here we are informed after the fact that Jordan Peterson had been entered our building as part of one of these productions we have since <laughs> severed ties with the third party and are no longer affiliated so the third party is our body he's not yeah. allowed to fucking use that studio is anymore. that who that is it's, yeah. yeah it's just like, that's the third you don't party. know who it is yeah, yeah i know who it is but so essentially <laughs> but like they're just a studio that's open a to the public friend. but they're just open to the public so when they say a third party someone called them up they go hi i'd like to rent your studio for two hours and they go, we've severed ties with that person you're like you didn't have ties he just called you up to rent your studio space. <laughs> you were one of the places that like got back to him. And probably like there were multiple oh, options. And, you know, it ain't happening again. I'll tell you that fucking much. Yeah, the trans community is up in arms. Though. <laughs> oh, that was was, the safety and comfort of everyone who ended up so <laughs> the idea that there's safety was yeah. when Jordan Peterson walks in. <laughs> it's like the script. What's he going? Why remember? was there safety fucking in yeah. trouble? <laughs> he's, coming, dude, he's coming in with a switchblade. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you're, dude, if you're like <laughs> trans and you're at, in the bathroom and you're using the bathroom that's for your gender. It's not trans people that are getting mad about this. It's well, fucking no, it's normal. All, no, no, no. It's all LG. It's a really like a big LGBT thing. But um, dude, just in their mind, this is their mind. Okay. You're trans. You're a tr uh, female to male trans person. You get in the bathroom. I think you're, you're off you're, on you're, that. You're taking a piss. The door flies open. It goes. Oh, hey, bucko. And it's fucking Jordan <laughs> Peterson walks in while you're using what to you is the right bathroom. But to him, he goes, hey, miss. Oh, I th thought, you, thought you were a fellow there, bud. But I guess you're a lady. Wrong bathroom. He pulls his dick out. Wrong washroom. <laughs> Then he just drops that fucking huge hammer. No, he goes to the stall right beside him, even though even though there's an like, empty one. <laughs> oh, you look a little lost there. <laughs> Ladies' rooms across the hall. You're like, I'm a man. You look a little lost there. Oh yeah, it's not what your DNA says. <laughs> So I guess that's what they're afraid of. I think that's what they're afraid of. That would be the ultimate. <laughs> Dude, if Jordan Peterson misgenders you. I think he holds that's it. That's just in. you're like <laughs> he's 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 regimented. He only pisses <laughs> once a day. <laughs> he just comes in to drain his bag. 
<laughs> he pulls it out. Is it attached in his leg? Yeah, dumps it out. <laughs> you, you, you lost there, Bucko? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit best part though for me actually was this whole thing was that the cost of the thing no not one, i went through all the comments because there's a lot of people very angry about this i guess another thing too is that the wo- woman who designed the space they never paid her either that was a part of it okay yeah, so then they were like scandals. so then they were like she's like lgbt they're renting out her space that she designed and like probably worked pretty hard to design it's like pretty nice space and then they like also hadn't paid her and now they're renting it out to jordan peterson <laughs> for nobody put this together but they're renting it out for $88 an hour. I know. <laughs> Tough price. Why? What's that? I don't That's, think. I, oh, you don't. <laughs> HH. I don't think like that. No, but. no, no. Well, so I, luckily those people don't because once they find <laughs> out about it. Dude, if this got any bigger. Like a little bit the, of a dog whistle. It's a massive dog. Like that, these are the dog whistle I remember people. When people used to say that 311 was uh, KKK. Like 311, the band was a secret. Th- it was like secretly racist because it's KKK. I can't remember what it is, but uh, this dude Jeremy Kaufman, he said that. The ADL has, uh, I think it's, I think it's seventeen numbers between one and a hundred that are racist. Oh, there's <laughs> <laughs> only eighty-seven numbers. You can yeah, there's only eighty-three num- numbers that are not racist. <laughs> there's like seventeen numbers between one and a hundred are dog whistles. Oh my god! But the uh, <laughs> it, it, the other part. Uh, the, with him is the Jordan Peterson thing. They are sending him to so the the psychological thing said he can't be a psychiatrist and then he goes to social media training, right? Yeah. And I was just fucking honestly, dying I'm I, I when this all happened, I was very much like, nah, he doesn't need social media training. And then now I'm like, uh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. he might need social media <laughs> training. All the poems are starting to grind on me a bit much. I've come around. I'm I'm I stand with the College of uh, Psychologists of Ontario. He needs like a little. Doesn't need to be from them. Yeah, it could be from a 14 year old, <laughs> but he needs something. You know, well, the the social media training is just killing me. The idea of being the social, which is basically your bathroom scenario, but you're the social media guy, like, and you just you know this is you're just teaching like the night class of yeah. your diversity training. <laughs> Obviously, it's a chick. Yeah, and then Jordan Peterson walks in like. He's like, all right, everybody. So, <laughs> pull out your laptops. No, no, <laughs> suck my cock. <laughs> That's incredible. He's, uh, Jordan Peterson not going to be doing any of this stuff. I'll tell you that much. He makes Jordan Peterson write on. I wonder. The, he has to write on the board like Bart Simpson. Yeah, yeah Bart Simpson. Huh? I will not misgender on social media. <laughs> I wonder if did, did they have a person that like at the college of visit or whatever psychiatrist who's like that's their job to do this or I think it's they're gonna bring on well the problem is they keep this is the thing about that fucking country that's out of control is like they try to make like being a liberal like uh, politeness yeah. do you know what I mean it's like because it's a very polite country and that's why people are you know kind of soft there or whatever right but they basically and this is the same thing you could say about like smaller you know smaller communities in general it's like they try to make like I have liberal politics like yeah. a uh, that that's the being polite or not being polite it was like he's like you can't say this stuff it's like okay well that is the that's the other side of the, you're, are yeah. you are you allowed to have a political position that isn't that or no and they're like no anything other than being a liberal is impolite right yeah, yeah that's yeah. like the gist of what they're saying yeah although they they did apparently a lot of it's the, bad manners to be like a conservative he's like well he is I don't know yeah also a lot of the provinces now I think they did a bunch of polls and because you know how like you should they the team Teachers like they want you to be able to uh, <laughs> like your kid can change the pronouns at school, but the teachers can't tell the parents essentially. Mm. Which I never got that because you're like, really, your kid's trans and you have no idea. I guess they just put this. St- yeah, well, they, these days you don't have to do much. That is the I thing, guess right? or whatever. But now they're like, pa- they did a poll and like pretty unanimous. Parents are like, yeah, no, you have to tell us. Yeah, like, we don't if, like that. If your kids like if my kids different gender at school, like I'd like to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they're not going to keep a secret on that one. And yeah. They're all like, it's not safe though. You go, you got to tell. Me. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, because we did that boomer video last week that like went super viral. So it's like I always think it is interesting because when think something does like four or five million views, it's you generally it's people arguing on your uh-huh. uh, 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 on your. Uh, social media feeds for the next like week and a half yeah so but it is funny because you almost get a crash course of every opinion that's possible and you kind of watch the same debates happen over and over again but it is and i've obviously like i sort of did a couple things about that mitch mcconnell had his nether one today where he was sitting there and he's too old to do a thing yeah i I was kind of thinking with the boomer thing because 
And, uh, you know, I'm always the same thing, whereas if I always said, like, if I was a black guy, I'd probably be, like, a Black Panther, because I'm usually I'm usually about my group. Yeah. Even, th- there is this sort of thing, like, how I, the way I thought about, like, feminism, when everyone was trying to stop it a little bit, it's kind of the same thing that you'll see about, like, ethnicities, well, they'll, you'll see people sort of say, um try to use it be like oh we have these negative stereotypes about you and be like well you keep like uh, leading into them or whatever Mm -hmm. and it was like yeah because I don't care what you think like if a girl's like this guy's toxic I'd be like and then you'd be like well you're proving me right by being my toxic and I'm like no I don't give a shit what you think you're irrelevant to me also I'm like Like, I'm not like this but I know that it pisses you off so then I know that it pisses you off and also yeah and on top of that it's like your opinion is irrelevant to me like you're like well I won't think you're toxic I don't give a fuck what you think so I kind of like think about that but there's like the like the millennials are soft thing there is a little bit of like yeah th- they say that but if you actually look at it it was like there is a percentage of millennials that kind of came up with this stuff and all the whatever progressive shit or whatever it was like who is a bigger bitch in covid like your buddies or like you know people that are 50 of course you know what i mean it's like it's kind of if you actually even look at like i mean i don't have any friends who are fucking wiping down their groceries you know no yeah so it's like people definitely were you want to talk about who is soft it was like even the even if like you want to make a real joke it was like yeah there's like the bill mars of the world that are kind of like you know a cut three years later arguing that like you know woke stuff's bad or whatever uh-huh. but you actually like who memed out that fucking ideology it was like of literally people our age you know yeah, what i mean sure. so they kind of were like you started it's like yeah we stopped it yeah so it's like yeah, people true. people like our age and then those people just sort of like once a once like a joke or like a ideology catches hold then three years later it kind of funnels up to bill maher and those types, yeah, don't you, you know remember I mean? the, the classic dennis prager on bill, bill maher being like men can have periods and bill maher is like nobody's saying men can have pe-. and now bill exactly. maher's like what's with these men with periods but that's what but that's like you know that's most people's dads too right yeah, of course that's kind of like so it's it, it just kind of that's why it like irritates me a little bit when you see boomers kind of being like this generation soft it was like you're the most complicit generation yeah yeah, and for, yeah also they were just like yeah well my uh my father fought in world war ii so like they kind of have that kind yeah. of like rubbing off on them where they think they fought in world and war i think II. it's all like, not about like it's always back to the the sort of um what you went through you know people say that meme like you know tough times create yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh strong men or whatever right. right well i think that is a part of it, it was like the last eight years, if you were like a dude in this society, was a tough time probably. Sure. So I think that did create dudes that are just like, you know, not afraid to be who they're going to be. Or, and I'm not going to, I'm going to say my opinions. Like what, yeah. you know what I mean? I'll fight against a thing. I think it created a lot of those dudes and I think that's why. So I don't think there's anything inherently obviously different. Duh. No. But my point is I do think that when there's like, which generation softer? Like, I don't really think that like even Carlos Santana right now. Right. Yeah. He was saying, he said like men are <laughs> men and women are women. And then rant. within a day they get mad at him and he apologizes or whatever. Right. Yeah. I see, I, I see more of the, like, I, they got mad at me and I apologize from like people that age. Whereas people our age are more just, like go fuck yourself of course of way course. more like yeah, friends yeah. of ours well they have like a lot that. to li- that's the thing carlos santana is what happens is he says this thing and then he gets sat down with someone who goes all right well, this is what's on the table right now yeah should you decide to not apologize alice cooper too alice cooper said something very similar and then the, and then they both have to apologize because they go okay so this is what you're about to lose because like you're in the main <laughs> system that's probably what it is too they yeah. go you're in the system like you're not fucking a podcaster okay like yeah. we're not talking about you getting a youtube strike like here's the t- Tours that are going to end. Well, they don't. Here's like your managers dropping you, like, and they go. People oh. our age are, fr- are are a little more like, yeah, fuck this, tear down the status yeah, quo. Yeah, I don't yeah, give a sure. shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, that, that which is what makes them like that. So it is situational, mm-hmm. but I think leading to that, it's like they're pointing to the craziest millennials and being like, look at their softer or whatever, and it's like, yeah, but on aggregate, like the average people who actually call the fucking shots and make shit happen are less soft. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean ugh. And okay, if, if you're just, in this, if you're in Canada or America, like I, th- there's a general softness, I think, just in period, I, like it's just. So but there's also a general right? hardness. Like if you fucking look at like dirty dog internet culture, like yeah, these people yeah. are not fucking pussies. No, and that's all like dudes our age. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, not there are all, a lot of like. Obviously, I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, Fucking sure. generalization. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll just tell, I'll say one last thing about it, and then we'll move on. But if you look at me, me and Johnny just filmed a video uh, yesterday. It was pretty funny, actually. We did uh, uh, asking people to donate to the Donald Trump yeah, uh, yeah, defense yeah, fund, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 
And who is who's the most fucking brain dead from TDS is 50-year-old ladies. Right. Like, who's the most fucking brain dead? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'd say most, like, 30-year-old ladies kind of fucking got out of the spell a little bit. For sure. Or they'd kind of 50-year-old ladies are fucking, their TDS is in their fucking right. bone marrow. And they have no clue that you're even, like, doing a joke <laughs> either, right? Like, they don't, they're not even processing no. that. Like, this is, like, nothing. Like, they're not even aware of any of it. Well, anyways, that's my, that's my pro. I just don't like our fucking generation getting shit on to that extent. You know what I mean? Yeah. People may disagree with me and fucking think we are soft. Whatever. Yeah. That's from lots of point that I'm making. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. And also, you know what? I'll make one last point. They had a better deal, even like with the girl shit or whatever. It'd be like so many of them. None of them had dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like a way better deal. I saw a good one recently. Yeah. Like, I like the coffee barista ones, but it was like, you know, coffee brewed at home, no one in the line, and then twenty dollar coffee brewed with a chick with a wiener. <laughs> it was like fucking big line. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. But, but yeah like you know so many of them uh you know the just a general consensus of like oh i could have a job and then you have like a wife that works at home or whatever like all their deals were better which i think makes you softer mm. the deals are harder to find right now it's kind of like it's like a uh, stock investing like yeah. when the when times are tough you got to be really good at it of course so i think you're right it might have like growing up but i think the last eight years sort of like fucking changed those tables a little bit yeah Draft King Rainmakers football is back for its second season, and it's bigger and better than ever before. Head to DraftKings.com slash audio and sign up to play Rainmakers today with the code BOYSCAST for your share of over $30 million in prizes this football season. This week, new customers can claim their first pack of digital player cards for free and get started. Playing Rainmakers football is simple. Each DraftKings digital card represents an athlete and scores points based on their real-world performance. Draft them into weekly contests for your shot at a share of $30 million in prizes or sell them anytime on the DraftKings marketplace. Rainmakers contests require no fee to join as long as you have enough cards to complete a lineup, rip packs, build your collection, and earn big rewards. Wondering how to get started? New customers visit DraftKings.com slash audio today and use the promo code BOYSCAST to claim a free starter pack. Only at DraftKings.com slash audio. A-U-D-I-O with the code BOYSCAST. And if you do have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Rainmakers contests not available in certain states. One starter pack per customer. Starter pack player cards are ineligible for resale. See terms at DraftKing.com slash Rainmakers. And now I got to tell you about Factor, because with the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor's America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. And I'll just say, personally, I had them today. Uh, delivered today Mm -hmm. and I'll just this is if I can give a recommendation it's this we me and Danny got a couple weeks supply from the thing and ran out and I just ordered my own personally so I ordered I got aside from everything I just ordered a bunch more and I've kept the thing going for like so for me solid meals two minutes this is all I've been eating right now. It solved my whole problem. So if you're too busy to cook, you want to make sure you're eating well with Factor. Skip the extra trip to the grocery store. Chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up too. While still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you got to do is heat up and enjoy. Then get back to crushing your goals. And if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best as you tackle the busy autumn, try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving, which is what I've been on, or at least some of them. I've did a mix, but yeah. round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add ons. You can include breakfast items like delicious apple, cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, potato, bacon, and egg breakfast skillets. Or for any easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, smoothies. So Factor's great. Try it out if you enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals. Enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered straight to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. And you, all you do is head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50 and use the code boyscast50 to get 50% off. That's code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 to get 50% off. The, yep. uh, the Oliver Anthony thing was also sort of funny with that guy. He went on Rogan, man. Yeah, that guy's fucking out there. But he was getting hit. 
because basically, <laughs> and I'm sort of agree with him. Yeah. Because basically, they played his song at like the Republican function or whatever. Everybody's right? trying to. The thing is, his that song was general, broad enough to a degree where like a lot of like, dude, I remember the first day it came out and there were all these like communists who were like, you know, socialists who were like, yeah, fuck the man, and he's like, he didn't write that for you, like uh-huh. necessarily, like, but they're like, oh, this is like for us, and then I think they quickly realized like, oh no, this dude's like kind of like redneck dude from Virginia, and this is not about, it. and then the Republicans are like same thing they're like this is for us and who knows he could be backdating what he actually I, honestly for, he could like, just I, wrote a fucking thing and now I think it's the biggest his thing, thing in the world is just like, justified. I think his thing is Conan is just like fuck the man yeah I think so yeah, yeah. But more importantly, it was like, regardless of like politics or whatever, which I'll say second, but the first thing is, it is fucking pretty like uh, corny always when like politicians use your shit. Sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, again, like the Vivek thing, rapping, like the, whenever, uh, you know. Uh, what is you the see, recourse like, there? there I you think you, Like, remember I think, Trump I think was of, using uh, Keep On Rocking in the Free World? Well, it depends if the guy likes you. I think Eminem's does like a cease assist a day. Right. Eminem's like fully cooked right now. He's yeah. always just like, it live literally, you know, so like a Republican fucking like wears an Eminem shirt. He calls sure, his he's lawyers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the, uh, with, with the Oliver Anthony thing, like I, I get if you were like a musician and they're just like, this is, well, we've had it before. We're like Ted Cruz retweets a video and you're like, Ugh. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> It just is. You're like, this just sucks. Andrew Yang was always posting this stuff. I didn't mind that because I didn't mind Andrew Yang, but yeah. it does. Because this is, people always talk about like, you know, art and propaganda or whatever. And I think the it's just the easiest way to describe it is you go, the difference between art and propaganda is which serves which. Did you fucking, did you use points to make a good thing or did you use uh, art to make a fucking good? Uh, d- yeah, did, right, right. Did yeah. you have a, did you have like a, a, did you have a point that you're trying to further and you're using songs or this, but really your most important part, part is to get people on board with the thing mm-hmm. and the songs and the movies or the secondary part. Or was it the other way around where you're like using what you think to make a good thing? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, which yeah. service is which, right? That's to me what the difference between propaganda and art yeah, is. What? That's, that's why Goebbels was so good. <laughs> he was he was he definitely did. servicing the yeah, art. Yeah, of course he was an art man first and foremost. <laughs> Him and Hitler, just a bunch of artists. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no. then, and then people are getting mad at him because he didn't want to say he's like a Republican or Democrat. But it's like, who, who doesn't think that they're like the Republicans are also corrupt? Of course. Like, there is obviously lots of billionaires that aren't like part of that stuff and there are some politicians People are just whatever, so on like, aggregate it's like anyone who's been in the system for 20 years is fucking bought and sold I mean my people friend. are like registered you know especially in America like people register for their parties they're like you, you know they're like I would never in a million years be like I'm not registering for a fucking party I know like I'll just show up and vote Right, you're fucking, and and you can even say like, hey, I like this guy, I like that guy, but yeah. to be just like on aggregate, this fucking to get on the in the general this list? this machine is like they're operating clean, my friend. You're fucking. I got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I got this girl's amazing. By the way, okay, ready for this? Yeah. I have asked the last three dudes I've dated for their bank account info on the first date. I don't judge people's actions. I look at the intention behind it. So like, why do you ask for that? Because I only want to date a wealthy guy that has money. Valid, so you're getting straight to the point. I think, you know, I have a job, I'm very successful. So I think I have every right to be like, hi, are we on the same level or where am I wasting my time? So she's saying she asked- Who is she? I don't know who this okay. girl is. I assume someone famous that were too. She's not the chick from. She's not the other chick from uh, Caller Daddy, is that? I thought it was that at first too. It looks like a Caller Daddy, Daddy style girl. It might be the other one. The so Sophia she says, "Listen, I ask guys their bank balance yeah. before I go on dates with them." Which I said, you know, I'm not here to say that's wrong. I actually sort of agree because what I do, I what I've been doing for years yeah. is before. I even think about going on a date. Maybe you just matched on his profile. You know what I mean? Maybe you talked on Instagram. What I do is I say, hey, I show up at the front of the restaurant. I say, what I'd like is uh, a printout Mm -hmm. of your Uber Eats receipts for the last year and a half. I want to see what you're eating. Just want to make sure it's clean. If I start to see, you know, two, three, four fast food a week, that's going to be a red flag for me. I'm eating clean. I want to know that you are. I want to see a weight chart of every family member. Listen, I don't need to get your great aunt or whatever, but I want mom. I want aunts. I want sisters. All that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll sometimes go as far as getting their social security number and then run it against the national 
registry of psychiatric evaluations just to find out where they it's stand. It's a smart move. You got to yeah, do stuff like that. Yeah, you just see, that. have they ever been, you know, admitted, any sort of just like stuff like that? Because you want to know what you're dealing with, right? You want to know if there's any, you know, mental illness in the family. There's main things you're looking for is mental illness, weight problems. I want pictures sure. of the mom, and I don't want to see no black and white. Sure. I want to see something with holding the today's paper. Yeah. And if she doesn't want to get that, that's fine. We, we can shake hands and go our separate Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. I actually have a kind of a sneakier one because she's very forthcoming. I don't feel like women like it so much. So I have a suit jacket. I used to have mm -hmm. it anyways, right? And I have a suit jacket that has a little pocket in the back that I could fit a scale in. And then when she's going to step over a puddle, I go to put my suit jacket uh, over it. So she thinks yes. she's stepping on the jacket to get over the puddle. <laughs> but she's actually stepping on the scale, registers her weight. And then of she course. Gets over. She's none the wiser. And then I know what I'm dealing with. That's a very, it's a chivalrous move and it's smart chivalry. That's yeah. what they call that. Yeah, exactly. What I like to do is Work I get- smart, not hard. I get the grocery bill, but I also- when I'm taking a look at that grocery bill, I want to see the groceries that have been purchased and I also want to see her credit card right. uh, to see if it correlates. I want to make sure there wasn't a guy expected to buy these. I want to see the quantities. I want to see how much is spending. I want to see what percentage is carbs. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. Gucci bag, I like to see a receipt on that. She shows up with an expensive bag. I'm going to say that receipt. So I, anyways, I've said beforehand, I give her a list of all this stuff and I say, get it to your accountant. She goes, I don't have an accountant. I go, another that's red flag. A, that's a big red flag. That's another red flag. Let me see that FICO score, please. And these are things we want. I want to see her mom. I want her on a Zoom call, and I yeah. want to make sure that's a 50, not yeah, a 35 yeah. Yeah. lens we're talking. I, I, I sometimes will, um, you know what you do is you, you get a photo of her, just a current photo, and then you take it to one of those uh, FBI like modelers or whatever. Who, uh -huh. like, you know what they try and find missing kids? Mm -hmm. And they go, this is what they look like now. And then you just get the photo of what they're going to look like in 30 <laughs> you get years. Them, you get then them you reference it, it against the mom, and then if it's like matches up enough. <laughs> yeah, you right? know that they're fucking talking bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny when especially i was kind of thinking about it on the quality stuff in general because there is uh only fans basically release their earnings and the guy's making like bank right so like, the, it's so crazy a guy owns only fans of course a guy owns only fans no like, no but i mean like it's not like a corporation like one guy owns well he tried own. to go public that was the problem he's yeah, having yeah, trouble going public he, he makes a million dollars a day yeah, he, well, he gave himself like 300 milli, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, yeah, and people are mad about it, but it's like it's his company. He's going to do whatever he yeah. fucking wants. But this is one of those things where you're, and there's 3.2 million girls that like signed up for OnlyFans right now, right? Yeah. So it is kind of one of those things where you're just like, and then you'll see these girls on Twitch that are like farting and shit like that. And you go, <laughs> I don't really want to hear that much about equality. Well, you guys can fart in front of a camera for, sure. for money. You know, and tell yeah, that to, yeah. and tell that's <laughs> not a job available to women. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? When you go, well, you know, every job should be equal. It'd be like, you can put your camera on and fart and someone sends you money. <laughs> Don't fucking talk to me about yeah, equality. Yeah, you like hang out in a hot tub. 3.2 fucking million of you guys are fucking showing titties for cash. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's not including ones that are on the that's street. That's an honest day's work, Ryan. The oldest profession. Yeah. And we don't have access to it, really. You know no, what I mean? Until no. Danny Bullishuk can fucking open up a camera, fucking toot one yeah. out. <laughs> And then pay his rent with it. Like there, yeah, well, yeah, those days. Don't yeah. fucking talk to me about yeah, I'll, I'll your a, marketing positions that you want more. I'm going to do a streamathon where I'm just eating beans <laughs> the whole time. You do. They can do a beanathon. Yeah, beanathon, and then we'll see. And then exactly. We'll see Until that job's is. available to men, I don't want to hear fucking peep. <laughs> You got to get your own fucking chicks in control. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Preach. No, but when they're saying like, hey, our NBA players don't make as much money. It's like, yeah, you can fart in a jar for money. There's yeah. your reparations. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know what you can do? Give a guy a hand job for cash. No one's fucking lining up for a dude to finger her for money. I'll tell you that fucking much. No. No. No, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of the big ones, this is just making me laugh. So Gwyneth, so basically the girl that was in Gwyneth Paltrow's- uh, The body double. The body double for Gwyneth Paltrow when she was in Shallow Hal, which is, I'm honestly on her side because she came out and she's like, this thing kind of ruined my life. <laughs> But that is what do you so, think it was? Gonna but be that like? is so funny, like how crappy that is that you were like, oh, uh, hey, I'm an actress. What were you in? I was the body double in Shallow oh, Hal. Be like quintessential. I mean, she's like like reference point for a fucking ugly fat. Chick. I know, but also like she goes, I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a movie. It was a Fairly Brothers production with Gwyneth Paltrow and Jack. Well, Black. I don't think or you think Jack about Black. it. Period. You just do Black? an audition and get a role, right? Yeah, yeah, Jack Black. I, Jack yeah. Right, but you're like, you didn't think it was going <laughs> to sure. be a 
But like when you were filming on set, and <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and Jack Black are walking <laughs> so, by. Yeah, yeah, Fairly yeah. Fairly Brothers. Yeah, yeah. You don't think this is like in might be prime. a banger in 2001? Yeah. But the funny part to me was obviously you're just like, yeah, that does suck to be like an actress. And what's your main credit? I was the fucking body from Shallow <laughs> Hal. That's like a joke you would say to someone, right? That is tough. And she's kind of saying like it was real tough for her. And then she was sort of saying she got gastric band surgery and experienced complications because of this. And I was like, that part, I was just like, I mean, well, that you can't blame that. You can lose weight without getting a fucking surgery. Of course. It's not like she got weight. fat for the role. Like yeah. they just were like, that's a good you can, body. You can lose her. weight without it, whatever right yeah but so they go she wasn't the only one who had a negative experience filming shallow hell gwyneth paltrow underwent a similar experience to her body double um because she had to portray uh fat rosemary in scenes featuring her face she had to wear a specifically designed 25 pound fat suit and prosthetic makeup which lead atrix particularly dreaded putting on she later admitted she did not enjoy it and it taught her what it's like to be humiliated as a fat person <laughs> i mean it sucks to have to well, sit in makeup like that every day well, go ask fucking dave batista or some shit well like, this is obviously the answer she's like i didn't enjoy that it's like yeah because you have to do three hours of fat suit makeup every day that sucks and yeah, you go brutal but okay when we were doing buck and chuck let me ask you a question sucks. would you have wear the fat you and then walk up to a fat guy and be like i now understand you solidarity <laughs> brother yeah, the idea that we wear the fat suits so we understand <laughs> it's like they used to do that shit on like those corny like 2020 shows or something where they're like oh yeah. it was the best they, they give you a fat suit so you can figure out what it's like to live as a fat. and it was always someone who like said something mean about fat people online so then yeah they could, like you know like you can walk a walk a mile in their shoes or whatever dude it was tyra they used to make these girls on tyra bank show they would make someone wear the fat suit then they would send them to the gym and be like this is how hard it is to be fat and try to make them do sit-ups but they're wearing like a fucking yeah they're wearing suit, prosthetics right? yeah, yeah, they're, wearing, not they're wearing like a big fat suit and they have to do sit-ups they can't do it and then they hire actors that are supposed to be people in the gym to walk over and be like you fat fuck <laughs> and you go no one at the gym does that Never. they hire actors Never. to go like call them fat and be like you're a piece of shit you shouldn't even be here and then they go then they start crying and then they go this is what it must likely to be fat and they go probably not no no it's not but Gwyneth Paltrow is saying that she put the fat suit makeup on so she understands the plight and it was like well, no, you understand the plight of walking around a Hollywood set for which you are the star yeah, of. Yeah, you're the star of this movie. And so you uh, you people were, I doubt people were and, meaner to you. And they didn't surprise you with this. They were like, hey, so, you know, we're going to be a month shoot, shooting for a month or 45 days or whatever. And you got to sure. do this every day, which is pretty normal for any superhero movie. Like if you're in any kind of superhero movie or whatever. Those, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, they're all just like, that's part of the deal. I don't know. Yeah, shit does suck. Yeah, it sucks. No question. But it's just crazy. I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow is like, the fat girl is doing an article about how this ruined her life. And you're like, yeah, that sucks. And Gwyneth Paltrow is like, right there with you. I've experienced <laughs> all of that. I, I, my life was torture when I was walking around that fat <laughs> suit. She's like, that's not what I meant. Gwyneth. We always do. It's like, I feel like this is like the fourth thing wacky that Gwyneth Paltrow has. She's always wacky. Yeah, she's, uh, I mean, that's what happens when you just start shoving shit up your pussy for a living. That does happen, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree you with that. You start going off the reservation. Hit the nail on the sniz. <laughs> Hit the crystal on the sniz. <laughs> Speaking of crystals, we got a really good one for you folks here. We're coming at you live with one of the best ones you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> so, remember if there was this article before, uh, Claire Audient? Yeah. And it was kind of like rationalizing being crazy. It was like, you're not crazy. You just, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was saying you're clairaudient. So this one goes, how to know if you're a karmic mirror and you trigger the people around you by being your authentic self. Have you ever noticed that some people seem to just not like you for no reason at all? You simply walk into a room and your presence annoys them. <laughs> 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 we got a case of a karmic mirror yeah. sometimes before you've even entered a word you can't put your finger on it but something in the energy between you just might be off and you might be a karmic mirror so basically she said like are you annoying yeah, and you're no a, one a likes you that's an, because an you're asshole? a karmic mirror and the, the the general gist of it is that you uh show them things about themselves that they want to be. So you're basically like a douchebag and you walk into a room and fucking everyone's like, oh, fucking this guy. And he's like, yeah. you hate me. You hate me because you ain't me. Yeah, it's sure. kind of the gist of it. You right? walk in like first time you meet someone, you go, hey, you got something on your tie. Oh, oh, <laughs> you go, this fucking yeah. guy. You go, nah, it's you, the guy. You wish you were that. It's the uncle. Yeah, he takes the tie and makes it a fucking tongue joke. <laughs> 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 Pick a card, any card. And then you go, no, you go, I'm a karmic mirror and you wish that you could do magic tricks. Sure, yeah. That but yeah. Sounds like just an asshole. 
Like, oh, it's an asshole, annoying person. I mean, we have a couple. There's a couple of people in comedy. Sure. Where, there's a couple of them that, that like. But they're like, well, I'm an asshole. They, they don't make some fucking, <laughs> f- like, you know, rah rah bullshit that chicks do where they go, oh, it's just your karmic mirror. <laughs> there was one about two years ago. There's one person that we've. Uh, there's m- so many people have been like, yeah, I don't like that guy. It's just like, there's something about him. Uh-huh. And then uh, <laughs> this is like. Three years ago, and I was, tell- I, uh, I was telling my chick, I was like, yeah, people don't really like him that much. And then she came back, and he was like, yo, he told me that he's the one who told you to start doing street interviews. <laughs> she's like, what the fuck? I was like, is that true? And is I was like, true no. that, he, that he was your inspiration Dude, for comedy? She basically, and he, his story was just like, yeah, I remember, you know, he was gonna, he was talking about, you know, maybe doing something on the internet. And I was like, you should do street interviews. And he was like, and Ryan was like, yeah. And then look at him yeah. now. And I was just like, what? <laughs> this is what he said. It's like, Ryan, did he tell you about the internet? Because he said that he was the first person who told you that the internet existed. But he's, he's, there's a few of those people where you go, yeah. this person is, uh, no one likes him. And people will be like, why? And you go, just, you'll see it's just you I know mean, it's, I mean? it's just a personality defect sometimes it's as little as that you know some people just, just rub everyone the wrong way yeah right but the, the idea of t- it's one thing being like taking my craziness but it's even funnier to me be like you bother everybody sure <laughs> that's just because of how how much they want to be you yeah Leave it to haters. Everybody's just haters. It's the it's the fucking haters on crack, but to to rationalize the people don't like you because they just want to be you on like a clinical level (laughs) is so fucking great. You only these people can come up with this fucking gobbledygook. Yeah, they're just like you're just uh, objectionably. You're intimidated by their confidence. Uh, This is a big part of it. So. As a comic mirror is someone who has, has the ability to unconsciously mirror someone's flaws and insecurities back at them. So kind of like, but even then, subconsciously, it'd be like, you know, this guy's rich and he wants to be rich is kind of what they're saying. Yeah. But it's like, well, they don't have one example of that, by the way, because well, what exactly would that be? Like, even if it was one of those where it's like a girl, like we're going back to girls where the girl's like, oh, this girl's in like a happy marriage and I'm single and I'm bitter about it. You know what I yeah. mean? And you could say that, but it's like, well... But uh, are you coming in being like me and my husband? Oh, I don't know how anyone could be single. Like, you're, you're obviously like, yeah, rubbing it in. Yeah, you're if, rubbing if it. Bothers totally. them that much. Yeah, totally. No like, one's gonna show their cards that much. Like some guy shows up to like a homeless person. The homeless person's like, "You got any change?" And you're like, "Sorry, I just I don't. I lost my forty thousand dollar watch in my wallet, and so and you're just rubbing it in. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm fine, but I just can't give you fifty cents right now. Yeah, right? exactly. Right, and you're just like, obviously. Um. It is good saying. It is good phrasing. The other way, though, you guys. I guess he's a bit of a karmic mirror. If you know what I mean. <laughs> karmic mirror. This guy is a little bit of a karmic mirror. I guess if you know you what say I mean. He's a fucking asshole. Yeah. So stuff you don't like someone saying they're a karmic mirror is always good to take these. I terms love the terms chicks c- c- can kind of like concoct. Yeah. It's amazing. I don't know how they come up with this stuff. I love it, dude. Yeah. She, uh, so there's a bunch of TikTokers that have fucking gotten all over this. And she explains, people might tend to avoid you in order to face, avoid facing uncomfortable truths about themselves. So it's like if you weren't invited to a party. <laughs> but it's like, it might be true. I like that some one person, but just like broad swaths of yeah, people. Yeah, and what, you're changing every time? <laughs> like every person you meet, you have this like new persona? Because if you're the karmic mirror, like it must be that that's your personality it doesn't so even then, make sense doesn't make yeah. sense because yeah you're at a party you meet 10 people and you have like 10 different things <laughs> so it makes zero and you're like sense. nailing for each one every one of your things is a karmic mirror yeah. to someone so like you just can't stop like being making people feel insecure sure. with how fucking yeah you know you insecure are. is a good general <laughs> one because you make everyone feel insecure and then everybody goes well i'm insecure Exactly. What are you go, insecure about specifically? It's like, well, a different person, different thing for everyone. For everyone, but that's <laughs> uh, but I that person's insecure. So, karmic mirror. Well, just to say that, yeah, just like entire populations of people on aggregate throughout your life have wanted to avoid you, and no one wants to be your friend. That's just <laughs> they're all jealous. Yeah, I mean, a true karmic mirror is not getting invited to shit. <laughs> karmic mirrors are staying home and just hanging out, looking at the phone, being like, huh. Well, as she says, she goes, no one wants to invite her to birthday parties. No one wants to get her at things. Classic life of a karmic mirror, man. Yeah. Just being so fucking great. No one can handle me. <laughs> it's the girls you can, I mean, a million comedians have made like a stand-up joke about this, but it's the you can't handle me. Yeah. It's like, what exactly can't I handle? Sure. I was talking about that at the beginning uh, when I first started comedy, some version of when girls were saying that, oh, uh, 
you know, I'll do moves you like didn't even know existed, and it'd be like the normal three are fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, what, yeah. what what exi- that I didn't know existed. It's like that idea of like you can't handle. Me. I was Ugh. like, what exactly are you about to do that cannot be handled? It's gonna be fucking on top, and yeah, then yeah. Fucking- and the worst part is you gotta like play along. Yeah. You know, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Wow. Head with both hands. I can't handle this. Okay. I guess you could come quick. That's what you come quick and be like, I couldn't handle you. Yeah. yeah. Guess you're right. I couldn't handle you. You were spot on and uh, you got to (laughs) go. Couldn't handle it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uncomfortable truths about themselves. This might make you feel like you need to. Uh, turn down your light in order to accommodate others. Ugh, well, it's like I ob- hate turning down their light. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever met a gender that doesn't like turning down their light. <laughs> it's the most gen- of all the genders. If you tell a chick to turn down their light, if you even just like insinuate Inquire that, that, the that their light gray, may yeah. have to be dimmed. Oh. It's the number one thing they don't like is that light getting, like, dimmed. Like getting dimmed. But also it is, there's, it is funny because if there was even any hint of truth to this, any sort of, uh, you know, dude based like advice is more just like, yeah, if you're the fucking top guy in every room, then you're probably like, you know, maybe like if you're like the yeah, billionaire, jealous, all your friends sure. are fucking poor. Like maybe you need a little bit more friends on your level, yeah. whether that be socially, financially or whatever that is, you know what I mean? Or in this specific circle it is like if you, you know, if you're uh, in sports and every one of your friends is not good at sports and it's just like you're like a professional athlete to be like, yeah, maybe you want some friends that are a little more athletic so they're not completely jealous you might oh, want yeah. some friends that are in your echelon sure but this is like so what gr- is this a girl that's just like the greatest in the world hanging out with literal fucking homeless people yeah, being this- like you're jealous and you're like well either yet yeah, duh they're jealous like they're Sounds you're like- fucking millionaire and these people are all like fucking homeless or two uh you're lying yeah this just sounds like bitchy cope of course, this is cope. This is a fucking. But it's just, yeah, it's just C O P E. You ain't got no alibi. <laughs> <laughs> you cope it. You uh, cope uh, it. You cope. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got no alibi. See, <laughs> chicks that. have quite the imagination, though. <laughs> they, they do have a good like imagination a child, coming like up a, with this. It's like stuff. a childlike imagination, almost. <laughs> well, it's all based on you know. There's something about me that I don't like. How can I clinically say that it's actually something? Yeah, good how about just, me? yeah exactly. How do I just you know what I mean? Karmic mirror. I can picture them being like, "Hey, you're a vegetarian, but you eat meat. But this is why that's okay." Like, there's nothing yeah, yeah, that yeah, they yeah, can't fucking fit into some sort of. Here's why. Yeah, here's why you here's shouldn't why be you so hard be, on yourself. You, here's why you can be a, a meat eater and still a vegetarian. You can eat chicken once a week and still a vegetarian because if you actually think about it, ninety. 99.9% of the time you aren't eating meat and that one time you know what I mean mm-hmm. you could come up with anything yeah they, there's almost nothing yeah nothing why you there's why, nothing they can't do why there's beating no, your I, kid I, I tell, you're still not a violent person <laughs> <laughs> I tell my girl that all the time there's nothing you can't do there's <laughs> there's nothing that you're not fucking capable of <laughs> as a gender however Hayes emphasized the importance of always being true to yourself no matter what that's no matter what, no matter if true to yourself That's means doing heroin. Ultimate justification for being a piece of it's shit. The ultimate cop. Know, I'm just being true to myself. What can I say? This is who I am. Bro, I'm sorry that I was being true. You took a fucking shit <laughs> in the fucking corner of the room. You took an upper decker at my grandma's house. <laughs> That's who I am, dude. Hey, man, you, think, I am. you can't handle who I mean? You, you can't handle me. You I think upper decker you, Dan's not going to take an upper deck? <laughs> they think they could, why do you think they call me upper decker Dan? You can't handle Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you triggered? Yeah, exactly. You can't fucking handle me. I'll take the upper deckers, and that's that. <laughs> you know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, like when people have this argument of freedom of speech, and they go, freedom of speech isn't f- freedom from consequences. Sure. And obviously, I mean, there's like a, everyone knows that's a spectrum with a brain, but yeah. you're like, wonder, where you go, yes, but I don't think those consequences should be losing your job, like on aggregate or whatever. It's yeah. like a culture, right? But the other part was like, that's the same thing I kind of think about like identities a little bit where it's like you have freedom for identity, but people don't have to be down with it. It's like yeah. those are the same principle. And I feel like I sit the same on everyone where it's like, yes, obviously people are allowed to get mad at you if they don't like what you think or whatever sure. to say. But like, yes, obviously people like don't have to be about what you're about. You know yeah, what I mean? Same with like religion. You're like, yeah, I don't know. You can be whatever you want. It's just don't make me involved. Yeah, that's the, and that's the one. That's the groups that I don't like is when they start making you involved. Yeah, that kind of goes back to the Oliver Anthony thing a little bit. That's because everyone was sort of saying like he should be admit to being conservative that's why like i've sort of mentioned this before but if you actually look at all of the biggest like leading figures that are very about like the group it's always a little feminine that's why like a lot of the big like conservatives that make money are a little feminine you know mm-hmm. what i mean 
But and, and the reason for that is whenever they start saying like, come on, guys, like you'll see, you'll kind yeah. of notice like a Matt Walsh type do this where he'll say like he'll pick something that is not even liberals and he'll say liberals right because like, he's always trying to like invoke like yeah the it's squad. The, the, the us versus them thing yeah because it's like they need like you almost need the comfort blanket of your group sort of like I mean it's literally one of the 40 group identities it's one of the 40 feminine. laws of power what is it? It's, legit, it's just like the us versus them thing where you go like, it's us versus them and they're common for us and you know, you don't, you want to be on this team. Yeah, like there's definitely much that part like of it. Set these teams up. But I always just think like the people who sort of like need it, you kind of see the people that like need the comfort of, you know, having like a, a group around them that sort of uh, yeah. will mimic all their beliefs. Of course. And feel well, like otherwise you feel crazy. It's like, I think if you have all these beliefs and you have no one like reinforcing them, sometimes I think you start feeling a little wacky because you're like, am I the only one? Yeah, I guess you don't want to have nobody. You want to have some people that think your yeah, things. Yeah, right. But I think there's also, so this is kind of what I'm getting at, is I think, here's a perfect example, right? There's these big groups that have, in, exist on the internet, like we're either this, we're the that, right? Yeah. We're the red pills, we're the this, right? And then there is sort of like, I think if you're like an independent person, you'd be like, yeah, I have my own little group, which is me and my friends, maybe my wife. Like you have your yeah, own sort of yeah, little of subgroup. But I think as opposed to being like, I'm a soldier in this other thing. And I think that's kind of where like it starts to get feminine when you like, you don't have the, you can't like, uh, create your own little group you know what I mean you uh -huh. need to be part of this yeah, sort of bigger thing of bigger one. Yeah. and it's easier to kind of fold yourself into a bigger thing than creating your own like kind of it's a safety blanket yeah you know what I mean yeah for sure and you could just sort of pick up on all the things there right it's like why sports are popular it's just such an easy thing to just be like I'm on the blue team it is easier to be on the blue team yeah but uh, going back to the karmic mirror uh, however she emphasized the importance of always being yourself Karmic mirrors are just one type of person who can nudge you to consider the unseen parts of yourself. So they're sort of saying they're basically, this is where it always gets to uh, at the end of it. It always kind of gets back to why the world's wrong. Of course. It's because like basically it's saying, Hey, it's never I changed. show up. No one wants anything to do with me. No one likes me. And all of those people need to embrace the fact that I can show them. The and you're perfectly fine. Just the way you are. You don't have a personality defect. This is the this is the world that's defective. Imagine someone being like, you show up and everyone goes, oh God, this guy's here. And you go, I apologize for being the manifestation of what you <laughs> hope to become. <laughs> that's what they say. You go, ah, he's on his bullshit again. <laughs> Imagine they don't like you and then you're pulling that shit on top of it. Like yeah, you have exactly. other stuff well, and then shit. that's... Like, oh, you just don't like this because this is how you are. You go, know, this is not how I am. Imagine, yeah, imagine dating a chick that was just like, I'm the, this is, uh, I'm the manifestation. You know, all these people hate me because you're like me. It was like, what about at work? Also hate me. Yeah, they, yeah. What about uh, like your friends from college? Like also they uh -huh, hate me because they yeah, hate me. Yeah. Every it's different person. Vam Dravitsayev, my podcast is the kind of thing I say to my grandma. And then she says, what's a podcast? Because I've been learning to speak Russian with Babbel. If you don't already know about Babbel, this summer you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor, fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language learning experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Now listen, Babbel is designed for real people, real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, and rooted in real-life situations and delivered with conversation based teaching so i've been using Babel. it's set up really well for when you're trying to just learn a language you can set it to how many minutes a day you want to do it so you can do like five minutes 15 minutes an hour me personally i just set it to five minutes a day and it just has these little like activities games set up it teaches you just like you know the basics so if you're going somewhere if you're trying to just have like a conversation you know intermediary conversation all the way up and it just like set up perfectly so that you can kind of just like get started and then just you know upgrade your language skills from there with 10 million subscriptions sold babbles a real language learning app for real conversations here's a special limited time deal for our listeners right now you get 55 percent off your babble subscription but only for our listeners so you get 55% off at babbel.com slash boyscast, spelt B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash boyscast. Rules and restrictions may apply. And you know we want you to be healthy at the Boys Cast, which is why I gotta tell you about AG1. I drink AG1 every single morning, one scoop, shake her up, 
Cold water. Sometimes I pop an ice cube in yep, there. I make it right as I'm making my coffee. Same time. Exactly. Before you do anything, before I run, before you work out, before you take a phone call, before you look at your phone. Yep. AG1 is one habit. It's oftentimes super hard to remember to take all these multivitamins or whatever you want to do. It's a pain in the ass. This is something you won't forget. It's got a good taste. Ever since I've been drinking AG1, I've noticed an overall feeling of health. And partially probably because I don't forget it. Yep. And I actually like doing it. It replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. AG1 is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. And it was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. It's very simple. My AG1 is delivered to me every month. So it's been super easy to make a daily habit. And then you also get the travel pack so you never have to miss a day, which I take them on tour. With AG1 taking care of my body each each day really is that simple. So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash boyscast. That is drinkag1.com slash boyscast. Check it out. And this is where they've gone to on the dating. I honestly think girls are having a hard time with dating right now. I sort of feel bad for them on that sort of accord. I know. Because I, I know what you mean, but they did, I mean, you know. insane upper hand. Like. No, but I'm just saying they went so hard on, like, the men are bad stuff and so hard on listening to all the fucking retard girls that were telling them all the shit that they should do that fucking made them undesirable and made the dating market almost swing to dudes a little bit, <laughs> devaluating themselves. They just fucking, they took such a hit and now they're, like, don't know what to do about it. And the, I, I'm telling you, these these girls like post like political identity a lot of them are fucking not knowing what to do with themselves no. so they're coming up with crazy ass shit like one of them is master dating is a new hottest trend all about the solo self pleasure and craze and it's like a whole fucking and thing about going on dates to do with Robin and Wynow. there's therapist no it's about going on fucking dates with themselves and there's therapists that are fucking charging them to go on dates with themselves and I'm telling you these girls a lot of them have gotten like very uh they just got like rocked by all the last little bit of stuff and just like they made themselves undesirable they don't know how to come out of it no one fucking wants anything to do with them because they made themselves annoying and gross <laughs> and <laughs> i mean nothing makes you sound more like a loser than having to call just going to do something by yourself at date yuck like like look you can just go do something you can by, have yourself. Dinner by yourself obviously. yeah like you can just go have a meal by yourself you can go like do something by yourself. The moment you go, hey, I want Or wonder, in your case, goes, oh, you can order two different meals and tell the person <laughs> that it's for just you. <laughs> you can order two different or and you then eat it by yourself. Or you could do the thing where you cover for yourself when you order takeout and they go, uh, three, four sets of cutlery and you go, Oh uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, uh -huh. we're, we're doing a big family dinner. Uh, <laughs> the nice. KFC family pack. <laughs> no, but I mean, I didn't know that you had a family. Huh. Um, yes, it's just for the family. I actually have two families. Keep it coming. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like you're like, what'd you do last night? You're like, oh, don't skimp on the slaw. Only again, another thing only chicks can do. Because it's like if you, if you were like, dude, imagine you going to like, like no by on yourself. A, I went on a date. <laughs> you're like, okay. I mean, a date. I, I I could be wrong, but I think if you like look it up, there is some. It is a date means element two. of has to more than one. It is. Yeah. So well, no. I think if you look it up, it means date on a calendar. Well, it has multiple meanings, but I'm saying the meaning that they're using it for is like. Uh, I no, but I think where it came from oh, originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. A date but but anyway, calendar. You would assume it means more than one person. And the moment that you're like, okay, you're a crazy person now. Like, just say you did something. Well, the funnier part is it's a fucking, there's a psychologist there that's fucking, this is his whole deal, right? He's a relationship coach. Yeah. Uh, he's a relationship expert whose assistance is in the landing a soulmate in the city comes with a price tag of 10K. Nice. And Nobile says that flying solo can be just as exciting and that'll be 10k <laughs> i, I did find you your soulmate he goes i paid you the 10k and i didn't find my soulmate au contraire, au contraire. <laughs> he pulls up the mirror <laughs> so but again no, can you imagine paying 10k for a relationship coach who tells you to go date yourself does that count as a relationship they're really bending the it does for the 10k you just paid him really bending the uh, definitions here of flying everything. solo can be just as exciting as being taken out by a handsome and charming partner <laughs> yes paying for yourself is, is just as good as like some super hot <laughs> what hot were you gonna say super hot what a hot person taking you out. <laughs> person <laughs> Daniel. of color <laughs> I know what he almost said. <laughs> hunk. <laughs> Super. And he's all chick. Yeah, he has hunks on the brain, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'd rather be myself than I'm a hot guy.
That was fucking great to watch. You go, uh, you go, oh yeah, going by yourself is super, is way better than having a super hot <laughs> person. <laughs> well, it's in the context of a lady. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, of course, right? Well, it's funny shit, though. Man, these chicks. 10 grand? 10 fucking This guy's a fucking G. This guy's like, might be boy of the month. This guy rules, yeah. This guy, if he's he, got these suckers on the line trying to find them a soulmate, and he's got them on, he's fucking like, going on like, dates with He's like with a himself. matchmaker where you just wind up with yourself. This guy's got these idiots going on dates with himself all around the city. <laughs> is he like, is he on a, a YouTube prank channel potentially? It's just two people at the fucking Central Park on a picnic. No bile, no bile. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, that'd be great if this guy has like literally like a prank channel where he's like, all right, today I'm going to pay me 10 grand. And that I'm would be a, around on a date. I guess yourself. that'd be too mean. People would fucking. Oh, super mean. But like, I, I the, but it is a really funny, the idea of like a fake therapist. Yeah. But like you're picking on people that like have real course, problems. So it's a, a pretty tough one. Yeah, yeah. But doing a fake therapist and getting people to sign up for your Zoom therapy. It's also, I think, illegal because you don't have a license. Yeah. I wonder how hard it is to get a license. That's a good question. Like you would know, don't you? Yeah, I think it's pretty hard. Yeah, I don't you think gotta it's... Do you got to do stuff. Gotta it's stuff. not nothing. Yeah, it's not nothing. This guy's got a fucking thing in the bag, though. But if you don't say you're a, rela you don't say you're a therapist, this guy says I'm a relationship, relationship coach. coach. Yeah, yeah. Then, coach then, is oh, fucking nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's nothing. Dude, there was a girl recently. We never had talked about this article, but she basically... She got kicked off of... Uh, uh, she got fired from her job for making TikToks at work. And she had like an empowering story of how she's like a life coach now. And it was like her qualifications are... TikToker that got fired from her job. Yeah. And now she's a life coach. She's like, pay me money for my secrets. Yeah. And it's like crazy. And she's probably doing okay. She has a big following, so she probably is doing okay. I think a lot of these people probably they sign up for their life coaching, but they just want to hang out with a girl because they think she's famous, you know? Yeah. But make a whole. So this is what they says for the dates make a whole day of it. Yeah. So you and yourself, you earned it. Mm -hmm. You're not just blowing off. They used to call that blowing off steam. <laughs> <laughs> Urge the expert who suggested mass dating at least once a week. He wants you to fucking make a day of it once a week. How are they going to afford it? He to just has to justify his 10K. He goes, you got to do a thing a week. They want you to make a day of it every week? That's crazy. You out of your mind, pal? Is, like, is the goal to fucked, eventually bud? meet somebody? Like, is the goal, we're doing this just so you can get comfortable with yourself so that we can get you into like a proper relationship or like what like what's I, the end I game think here? it's just it's just love fucking, yourself just dicking around it's basically dick around yeah dick around and just be poor the for fuck it. send yourself flowers in the morning well this is getting sadder and sadder dude when you're on the you ever sent flowers and you call them in <laughs> this address and you go <laughs> uh so where's it going to and they go and who's it from same, Daniel same name as the uh <laughs> As the address and is there a message <laughs> you are beautiful you are beautiful you are worth it you are a king okay okay and uh can i uh, pay extra just to make sure that it's there by tomorrow i'm gonna need those tomorrow morning <laughs> send yourself a sweet note saying i can't wait to see you tonight so you're sending in <laughs> you're sending like your crazy it's like crazy behavior. Yeah. You know what's really crazy behavior? That it's $10,000. Jeez. Schedule a fancy mode Holy of transportation to get these. They want you taking a limo to your date, by the way. Yeah. I mean, people, I guess, have tons Make of Make a full day of love. So yeah. this is for divorce chick that fucking has got, took the bag in the settlement. Right. I mean, people, I guess, have lots of money in cities. Like, I, we have a friend of ours who he was telling me he was going on dates that were getting set up by some, like, matchmaker. Uh, like some like big okay. matchmaker and I guess he got in the pool of, of guys or whatever and he's like the girls would tell me like they were, they were paying like 10 grand a month to go on like a date a date with, with your buddy yeah <laughs> I mean you know him too but it's like he's just a comic and he's like he was just getting do you think that uh, and I was like really you basically are sitting like I'm tr trying not to be like a dick but I'm like Really? You? Is that what you're saying? Kind of. Like, he was like, yeah, I know. He's like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, That's what 10K gets you. <laughs> Jeez. What is that? The bronze package? What do you get <laughs> when you kiss a girl? That's you frolicking <laughs> in the park by yourself. Yeah. Doing the Austin Powers. <laughs> you know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The Charleston. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, that's, that's yeah. you fucking with the flowers in your house naked. Yeah. I'll never fall in love again. <laughs> Don't tell me about it. You eating cake? <laughs> Does would you like dessert? I think I would. 
<laughs> you, this is you sitting at the thing. You go, you're talking to yourself. You go, ah, oh, we probably don't need dessert. I'm just ah, fucking just with Josh you. And just Josh and Danny. <laughs> Two, please. I wonder if there's any scenario where, like, the guy goes, has, like, a guy who's going on these master dates and then. Well, the guy goes on a master date with a flashlight. But I'm saying, no, no, but I'm saying, like, a guy, he has a guy client and a girl client who's telling them to be alone. And then he goes, wait a minute. And they like pair. Yeah, right. yeah, he has like, a, like a, a eureka a, moment. That's the platinum package. Well, the platinum package. Fifty is G's a month. I'll tell you about each other. I'll tell you psychos <laughs> about each other. You guys deserve each other. <laughs> parents drive you nutcases. <laughs> <laughs> he just sends them all to the same bar for like solo dates, and it's just like a fucking singles mixer. <laughs> just a bunch of people on a, a date by themselves in the bar. Cases. Everyone's dancing by themselves. Every single flower and they're like... <laughs> okay, switching gears a little bit. We're going to go the other way and fucking... Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about a guy that's, uh, in my opinion, now we're lost talking. it a little bit. Yeah. Give the girls a break for a little yeah. bit. Talk about the dudes. Because... Some of the dudes have gotten off the fucking deep end a little bit too, and sometimes you need to you need to mention that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's pretty funny. So, this girl, I accidentally looked at my boyfriend's diary and found out he's an incel. So, out yeah. of the gate, I thought the thing was going to be like, uh, "Oh, this wife's a nutcase." He said sure. nothing crazy. Yeah. But reading the diary, it was a little it's funny. Crazy. But it is also funny that she calls the the ter incel terminology. Where you're like, "It's your boyfriend." Like he's obviously not involuntarily not, well, celibate. This is she don't know. The term she don't know what the fuck she's bandied. talking about. But the things that were in his diary was uh, basically she's just, uh, this guy's obviously just been like mainlining Tate. red pill content. Yeah, yeah, like Tate City. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what? There's a lot of people like fucking arguing in that space. You know what I heard? Abba and Preacher were saying that um, it kind of goes back to the you know can you get good message from the guy the uh -huh. bad person or whatever. Yeah. You know, I you know we obviously like Abba, but I think on the show that he was like. It might have been preached, but he was like, the um, the problem with like, a lot of these guys is uh, their message is like just covered with, you know, bad. It's like all just like one, you know, two good things that are sure. bad things. And they were just like, if you eat food and if you're like, oh, I want this sandwich, but it's covered in shit, would you say it's still a sandwich? Like you'd avoid the whole thing. Right. right? right. That was their argument. But then I was like, I, I was like, that kind of makes a good point. But then I thought about it more and I was like, well, yeah, but I guess if you think of it as a sandwich, it'd be more like if you think of information like nuggets of gold for example if you Better found a dirt. bunch of nuggets of gold and there was a bunch of shit on them you would still try to take the nuggets of gold out yeah. so it kind of the analogy just depends on how you look at information right how hungry you are and but i think it does boil that down you go was i do i look at like these people as like am i looking for a sandwich like a fucking ideology or am i looking for nuggets of information yeah, yeah. if you're lo looking for nuggets of information who gives a fuck if there's shit on it for sure but if you're looking for a fucking full package thing and you can't take the individual parts and they're not useful on their own then you're right at being shit yeah, on it like you could go take you listen to Andrew Tate and be like look you're only allowed to take away one thing you have to make yourself rules of that. No, but I'm saying if you go to something, you go like you're only even if this you was actually most, less Andrew Tate. Even if you went to the most like shit, fervent but. like uh, person who opposes Andrew Tate, and you go look like surely there's one thing you can agree with him on. Surely you agree that. But I don't know if they would though, because if you're like surely you agree working out is good for men. They'd exactly. Be like, no, it's not. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, like even if the working working. I, I actually think they wouldn't be able to find one thing yeah, good yeah, about yeah. it. But they're like ideologues. Like you know, at that point, they're just like they're. Of course. But any cooked. normal person who is probably like yeah, a lot of the stuff he says is like pretty like over the top. But they go yeah, working out's good. Well, you have to also remember that like normal people that aren't super tapped into spaces don't see all of the things. No. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sure, yeah. if you're talking about Andrew Tate, they might have seen four things. Uh -huh. And they make sense. You go, what about all this other stuff? It's like, I don't know the entire catalog. It's like most people are That's probably right. yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah. with a band. You're like, I like those four songs. You're like, do you not know how shit that third album was? You're no, like, I don't yeah, care. I haven't heard of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Didn't even know that. You know how fucking album. garbage that new album was? And you're like, hi, whatever. I like the three songs. I have yeah. them on my Spotify. I'm sure. Not really that big of a deal to me. No. But so this guy, uh, the girl says the same intimacy that was overflowing at first was now non-existent. It's like he flipped a switch and this guy flipped a switch and then she looked at his diary, which I don't, don't like the stuff. I'm not on this girl's side necessarily, yeah. but she goes not in a snooping or diaries. We're not in a snooping. We're also not into having a diary. Exactly. As a man. That's, that's a little saying. fucking corny too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So this guy basically is 20 years old and he just fucking got, he has been mainlining this kind of content on the sure. internet. And this is what he write. By 28, a female has damaged goods in my eyes. Hakima is already 36 and she is not selfless enough. She is questioning my leadership and is challenging me. My trembling, fi- she, go- she goes, my trembling fingers clicked on the next page. I need to find a younger and more innocent girl that I can trust. Someone who sucks in bed, grew up sheltered, and was a bit ugly for her younger years. So Sounds guy- like this guy's <laughs> trying to do the lover boy method. He's trying to get you some can- He's get- trying to get some cam in business. Oh, yeah. But I think that if you watch enough of that stuff, it does sort of say that like that is the mold that you're looking for, right? Yeah. I mean, there is some oh. element. Where- oh, here we go. Down here. <laughs> down and out. You're doing like the Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, now I'm going downstairs. <laughs> <I've got> a- <laughs> Take the elevator. It's Austin Powers oriented episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah no i mean yeah well, the there, thing there I, is some element that it's true well my point no no my point to this is and this is where it comes this is why i brought up the nuggets thing or whatever right yeah like the obviously there is some argument to be made that there's you know parts of that that's good but like what they're forgetting is the other side of it where it's like it's all trade-offs and it's like so you know, there is a big thing of like, you want an innocent girl that's all this, not all the bodies and all that stuff. You know, at the, on the other end of the spectrum, have, you know, the more girls he's been with, probably the more likely she is to fucking cheat, the more divorce rates higher, yep. blah, blah, blah. Like, there's just all this shit, all of a sudden, you know, whatever. If you're, if you're not that, you think it's gross, whatever you want to say, right? Uh-huh. The other side of that is the more innocent the girl is and the more like she likes your leadership, the less independent you is and the more she's going to be like fucking needy. Yes. So it's like, this is the part of the trap. Some guys I think might want that though. Well, you they want might, like a pet. You, okay. This is very true, right? So this is the part that it goes back to who you are. Because if you're a type of dude that wants to accomplish anything and is like working towards anything, what you don't want no. is a girl that needs fucking constant attention. No. So you are right. If you are maybe the guy that like has a job that you work 30 hours a week, you're kind of just looking to chill, all this stuff, you're semi-retired almost. Yeah. Yes. And that's why you see a lot of people like even in our industry or stuff like that, they kind of have like somewhat of an independent girl. And then after they get divorced, Course, their next one is a little more needy it's like they're semi-retired yeah, now and yeah, they're just they, spending they the money more, and living lavishly yeah, i know a lot of people that sort of I mean, the, this second round was more of that right sure. but like I, the negative part of having the fucking you know super young super innocent is they fucking t- dr- take up a lot of your fucking time and yes. headspace yeah it's like you know yeah. what i mean but i guess you can mold them a little better to how i guess what you you can't want. mold that in out of them because the truth is the independence like the girl that sort of like disagrees with you a lot <laughs> She also fucking is doing her own thing a little more. Right. So I, and again, I'm not saying that there isn't, you know, a spectrum and you find what's right for you. But I think when you start to get into people's heads, like this is the perfect one. There, there isn't a perfect one. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, of course, that's that's with a girl. It's like, there is no perfect I mean, fucking no, girl. There's been a lot of guys who probably they're all prop. There's going to be problems no matter what. For sure, there's a lot of guys who I, I guarantee, like throughout history, have just been like, you know, I'm just going to keep moving on. I'm going to find that right one, and she's like, never happens. Right. You're, it's just you who is too way too picky and thinking that that even exists. Yeah, exactly. And it's not. It's not even like. Yeah, it's. It's not. Maybe why not. Is, picky is the right word. It's the you think it exists is the yeah, more, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I wonder why that like, guy's staying in that relationship if he has all these. I wonder if he was like so diabolical, like he's like so 4D where like the last page was like, and I'm glad you found my diary, Shakima. Yeah, maybe. Or whatever. <laughs> like she read all that stuff. Because I understand that's sort of annoying where you're just like, but yeah, the, the, the bottom line is like always, it's always going to be some parts of it that suck a little of bit. Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that to some degree, you probably try to, I think in a lot of people try to get too much from their fucking significant other too. Because like, don't forget, you go, what you want is like, you want to, People always try to get everything from their girlfriend. It's like, because I feel like there is some degree where girls can like, they get their social life from their guy. They're, from dudes, it's like, no, you want to have your fucking boys. You want to have your this. Like, yeah. that wants to be like a small, you don't want to try to get all the things you need in life no. from her. Your satisfaction, like your work. All that stuff needs to come from somewhere else. Yeah. A little sure. bit, you, you know, know what I mean? Compartmentalize it to a Yeah, so you don't want all that stuff to come from her. So if you have a, someone that's just like, stay at home unless you the, the only way to like have that is you give her a ton of kids and then it's like okay whatever like yeah, they're all the, gonna be fucking yeah at that point she's got her hands full yeah and, if, I, and probably she's not working so whatever or you unless you're like money, living off you're one of those living off the grid people where you're like you know there's no no, no neighbors for 50 miles and well you need like, someone there yeah and then you're just gonna be fucking by yourself or whatever but yeah so there's like there's two sides of it 
there's two sides of every coin and there's no perfect version. I think that many of men, including fucking everyone I know, and you talk to people when they're like 50, it's like, yeah, you fucking, you think that you're like this. It, 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 basically, there's this problem and you're like, okay, this didn't work. This I think I can solve this problem of like, it's like an equation of like, okay, I want to have a chick, but I also want to ban girls. You know, I want someone that's this, but I want someone. It's like this equation you think you can solve and it is unsolvable and you just die on your last day and you're just like, it was never solved. Yeah. You know, some guys solve yeah, it by sure. like killing themselves. <laughs> and I do, <laughs> but I actually mean they solve it by like, like essentially like d dumbing themselves down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like die inside. You die inside a little yeah, bit, yeah. and then you're just like, oh, the happy wife, happy life guy, and you're just a shell of yourself. Yeah, you kind of essentially become just like a servant to your family unit to some degree. Yeah. I think that maybe is one way to solve it, but I don't think NPC that works for some yourself people. Up a bit. You NPC yourself up a little bit, yeah. but there isn't really a solution. So I think when people watch this content that says there's this perfect solution, it's the same thing that feminism did to girls where they go, there's this perfect solution waiting out for you. And then it, all it did is kind of make them unhappier. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas if you just know there isn't the perfect. I wonder if this guy's like it would be interesting to. It would you don't be, want to be like funny but... to find out this guy's like you know four hundred pounds kind of thing, and he's all like, "Oh, even yeah, <laughs> better, dude. I hope so." He goes, "Her eggs are wasted. <laughs> <laughs> They're dried up, and I'm on to the next hot piece of ass. <laughs> She's a slut." <laughs> <laughs> That's a dirty slut that's sleeping in the next bed of mine. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, uh, you ain't doing better than this, pal. I've only been getting head once every three minutes. <laughs> once a day is not enough. I've Googled, uh, I continued to the other tabs, five signs of a low notch count in a woman. Low notch count. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't yeah, this happy is, with This has got Tate written all over it. Yeah. This, he, I, yeah, he has a bit of that for sure. I think there's other people that have more aggressive versions yeah. of it. But he's, yeah, he's definitely into that. Dabbles in that body a little bit. The body count world. The body, <laughs> the body count world. I mean, I, yeah, whatever. You don't want some crazy high body count. Because no. it is fucking, those girls are, can be a hassle. But, of course. But, you know. But, yeah, the idea of, like, writing a dot. I'll tell you what. This guy... Uh, that says I generally the guys that are like writing diaries like this they're like there's that this this is sort of Tate stuff but the guys who are writing the diaries like you're not the type of guy that has some fucking subservient wife to your leadership no hell you know no. what I mean fuck that no. guy doesn't have a diary yeah I don't think Tate, I don't think any of Tate's <laughs> advice is yo go keep a journal <laughs> I don't think that's any of his advice so. <laughs> But it's just like don't waste your time journaling. Go. Uh, it's money. pretty hilarious. I thought this was gonna be like fifteen because it does remind me of like a fifteen year old. Like, yeah. To do list. Get hot chick <laughs> who's fucking subservient to my yeah, leadership. Get get head in car. <laughs> get innocent girl who <laughs> will subserve me. <laughs> but it is at twenty eight. Be having a to do list that's like. I guess you've, I've had a to do list in my life where it's like dump chick and it yeah. just sits there. <laughs> just top of that list, staring <laughs> back sits at there you along every with getting day. an oil change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the, the odometer of your life is just. Let's just say my over. list was uh, oil, oil change, haircut, dump girl. <laughs> and I'll tell you this you can read between the lines, but I haven't changed the oil and I got long hair. <laughs> Now the move there is you go, honey. Can you handle my uh, to do list? I'm just like so overwhelmed, and you handle the laundry <laughs> dump girl on it. See, and she goes, break up with me. I'm not doing. How am I going to do your to do list? She goes, well, that's why it's on there. You're not subservient to me. You just proved my point. Yeah, you proved my point. <laughs> hey, honey, could you it's do this? Over. I'm not doing this. You've proved my point. <laughs> genius. It is genius. What a fucking annoying person. This German Harris who fucking in inherited 30. She's inheriting like 90 millions of dollars. A fucking idiot. And she's on a big. Billions. Yeah, she's she inherited 90 billion or billion. inherited billions. Yeah. And yeah. she's on a tour saying that she wants all of it taxed away and billionaires shouldn't exist and all this sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. And it was just she wants 90 percent taxed away. And it's like it was the most annoying person in the world. Like imagine just ever being around this person. She's got the haircut you think she has. She looks exactly how you'd think she'd look. But the first part was why did the grandmother give her the money? Like if she's not Well, because the grandmother worked goddamn hard to build a company. So why that give made it to her money? then? Why give it to her if she's gonna give I'm it all kidding. away? Obviously the grandmother didn't make any of that money. Oh <laughs> what the fuck are you on? Good point. Because <laughs> uh, the grandmother fucking got it. Yeah. The grandmother didn't work for it either. Mm. But the more important part 
is when you have these annoying chicks, right? And there's a lot of them. They'll inherit like a billion dollars and they want 90% of it gone so they yeah. can make a point. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, yes, it's easy to give away money when you didn't fucking work for any of it. Okay, you know? but also like, not give it away. People. Like if you well, think the money, why would you want the most inefficient way possible? But you, you're hitting the nail on the head. But the point is these people... It's always 90%. Sure. Why not 100%? Girl's like, I shouldn't have this money. I can't believe I have to be born to this yeah, stupid yeah. rich guy. I'm giving away 90% of the billions. Like, why not 100%? Yeah, you're still keeping $500 Why not million give dollars. away every single penny? Yeah, that's true. You are still keeping $500 million. Well, I exactly. think she's getting $5 billion or something. Why like not that. give it all away? Yep. It's uh -huh. like, well, clearly, you're fucking full of shit. Yep. Give away every penny. Mm -hmm. Or nothing, and keep your job at the fucking as a barista, or, or keep with enough, a <laughs> or keep enough money for yourself to have like. Oh, a, shit. A, a <laughs> <laughs> Down we go. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Basement, please. No. <laughs> oh, and I'm just gonna. Uh, oh man, you're listening to this right now. You're like, what is going and on? I'm gonna read the bottom of the article here. <laughs> The laziest man alive. <laughs> uh, if you're listening, our chairs are going up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom floor. <laughs> Bottom floor, please. <laughs> Funny. And uh, German Harris, who's 30. <laughs> because the wealthy shouldn't decide to get the money. <laughs> A <laughs> Is this lift broken? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> bottom floor, please. <laughs> <laughs> Why not tax it all away? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she should give herself like an annuity where she makes she gets fifty grand a year for life or whatever. Give herself an annuity where it makes she zero well, or I call bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, she's whatever. If, if basic, uh, it's understandable for like at least basic. Uh, needs met like food and shelter. Well, the problem with these people is they don't understand. But why would you want the at, government? Well, anything they don't like you. Surely you're not a pro-government communist. I guess she is a communist. Wait, well, well, not of course a, she is. Well, I guess. But you're like you know that you should, like. Okay, I guess if she's, well, like she's super so, far left. Yes, she's yeah, she's like she's like the government can do everything better than me, including decide where my own money goes. But they don't. I mean, the it's hard to explain. Wasteful allocators of money like that's possible to exist. It's like that's a your fact. Money, that's it's like giving your fact. money to one of those you know those charities, and you can see like how much actually like makes it exactly. Like, and you go, yeah, it's like three percent of the money actually makes it. Yes, cut the bureaucracy, give it out yourself. Yeah, just go stand out on the fucking street. Like you're better off literally getting a fucking helicopter and just helicoptering them. Jump money into up. it. Yeah, <laughs> just helicoptering the money just out from the thing and just letting it fall in the streets or whatever. I don't know. Of course. Yeah. Like, well, no, but she, the, the, the thing, like, they, first of all, they don't understand the idea of like capital where they, they act, these people actually think billionaires are just sitting there with like a checking account balance of yeah. one billion. Yeah, for sure. And they're you know, just in their checkings account. Yeah. He's yeah. like, well, no, people like use capital to do things. Do th absolutely. Like buy and, Twitter. <laughs> like buy Twitter, yeah. And it's probably, uh, I guess she has some guilt. Well, they also, all from like an oil of company, course. Right? Yeah. But it's like, you have guilt. Doesn't mean everyone else has, but they also don't understand like the idea where you go, you know, we live in this unequal society and that's, you're like, yeah, that's a function of having freedom. Like, yeah. You go, I, that's a part where it's always funny to me. Cause it was like, there's inequality and you're like, yeah, obviously you do tr like the, that's the balance you're trying to strike. You know what I mean? You're, you can't just have, you know, the rich people have all the money because that's how you get fucking people very unhappy. Right. So you need to figure out a way to, you know, keep people not that pissed off. And that's why, you know, the gains and it is unreasonable that the last like 20 years, the gains of, you know, the wage hasn't gone up, but GDP has gone yeah. up or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So there is a problem with that. But the idea that like there is going to be no equality, it was like, no, that's a that's a function of the system, not a defect. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course, it's a feature, not a bug. It's I a say. feature, not a bug. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. She's obviously stupid because well, like duh. give your money away, but, but annoying like, yourself. Yeah, duh, obviously. and that'll give you something to do. D totally right. Yeah. But she does. Yeah, she she's trying to use it to be a good point. But the dream scenario is I get taxed. It is like a spoiled rich kid because it would be true. It's like you yeah you would have someone that you go if you had someone that like. 
generally worked really hard and like you know was a you know someone that like worked really hard and was always trying to build stuff they took that money they probably would be like oh i'm gonna do something really great with this uh-huh. she's literally like mm, take it away yeah take it away i don't uh, i don't take it away it'd be funny if like, i take it away and she... but to also take his away too and his away yeah you go that guy made his one take it away like i wonder if it was the kind of thing where like her grandfather was like kind of like had ties to the nazi party or something. why don't you just buy a bunch of people health care like literally you have a billion dollars like buy a bunch well, of she people. probably lives somewhere that has free health care she's in europe Wow. Probably free health. But you could buy housing. You could. That's the one that you uh, I was imp- always. You could, Im- you could like get tons of migrants over to your country from all over the place. You, you could, could buy you could, so many. <laughs> you could buy so many migrants. You could. <laughs> I guess you're renting them technically, but you could pay sponsor for the, you, a bunch. You of could migrants. sponsor a bunch of migrants. There's so many things she could do with this money. Oh, tons. Buzz, tons of shit. Uh, asymmetrical bowl cuts for free, <laughs> free asymmetrical. Dude, she bowl could cuts. get a fucking like Chinese company to design like some sort of like bike helmet that you put on and it just gives you the the haircut. Take Chinese bowl cut it's haircut. Like, kind of like a floby. Slash like, super how about advanced. this? Go to every place that doesn't want to do gender ne- neutral bathrooms and be like, I'll pay for them. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pay for the modification of them. Yeah, yeah because of a big a lot of the places they're like, yeah, I don't want to do that because it's gonna cost fucking yeah to uh, ten grand and we're like a Pro- family business. Solved. Be like, okay, I'll pay for every gender neutral bathroom. Uh-huh. So many things that she could do that would probably align with her fucking shit. Yeah, she doesn't give a shit though. Well, the dream scenarios, I get taxed. She's fucking. The co-founder of Tax Me Now. <laughs> tax Me Now. She's tax the, Me Daddy. How much that da- Tax Me Daddy. Tax Me Good Daddy. daddy. <laughs> tax Me Good Daddy. <laughs> it's a group of wealthy people in Germany uh, who are campaigning for greater taxes on their earnings. What about if they just paid people's tax bills? Like just yeah, blue, go pay, play, go, go pay blue collar people's tax bills so they have more money. To well, just obviously the, the, the truth is, is they're putting skin in the game. That means nothing. It's like, this is the thing they're saying. Other people should have their money taken away and they'll be like, you can take mine away too. And you're like, yeah, but it wasn't really your money. So it's sure. very different. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, you, you're basically saying like, it's, it's obviously daddy's money. Yeah. So you're just like, hey, I think we have too many cars. We should crash my, our, everyone should crash their cars. Crash four of yours and four of my dad's. <laughs> like, that's the gist of what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, you like, know what I mean? Even, no, you're like, well, those aren't cars that like you made money for and bought. And you'd be no. like, yeah, th- th- you should crash mine and my dad's. Well, it's good luck with it's that. Like, it's this. I was like, anyone who has an empty uh, empty room in their house should have migrants living there. You and my dad. <laughs> and so my, it's all just their dad. And my racist dad. And my racist dad. That's what it always comes down to. And the product of unequal society. That's the one when you're talking about like their bad allocators or whatever. That's the one thing where... I mean, she is German. Like, legitimately, maybe her great, her grandfather was a Nazi, though. That's possible. Yeah, it's, it's sounding like that might be plausible. Sounding like that might be the kind. Yeah. But they were saying... Uh, like, when Jimmy Dore talks about, like, when we were talking about him in the healthcare or whatever... Mm-hmm. Um, and we've like people did make the point in us like there is some degree when you're kind of looking at like oh the government's so corrupt I guess if you're saying oh if they're gonna do it uh, the, his way it's like you actually do have to tear the government down and yeah, start from scratch sure. which is probably unlikely yeah but with with the healthcare thing there are a few like that where I accept that there would be a bad allocation where you go, yeah, it costs 30% more, but I still think it makes sense. Uh, so I'm like, I think that's why I never like it when people deny. They go, no, they can do it just as good. Like, no, they can't. No. They cannot do just as good. On average, what is it? Like 30, 40% of waste generally with government programs, generally something like that? Probably, yeah. I don't something know exactly. like that, right? Yeah. But for, there are right. one or two things where I still think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. That I, mean, I don't want to go like two full tier. libertarian thing. Two tier. Like, yeah, where you're like just totally privatized like we don't want to privatize like the subway no in like a city and you're like i don't know that probably doesn't no i think subway sandwich should be socialized (laughs) everyone should get their. they actually did just go private or no they were private and they They were were private and they went public or not public something they got sold and the product of an unequal society i'm just saying the main takeaway from this article is just like this girl will be fucking crappy to be around Uh, (laughs) until the until the bill comes (laughs) Yeah, it's a restaurant. You're all fucking Taxenheimer over here is going to pay for it. <laughs> well, billionaire over here wants to redistribute the wealth. Fucking redistribute start, the cost with, of this. Yeah, redistribute the fucking cost of that bottle of wine. <laughs> start by redistributing the cost of this wine. Her speech, she does a speech for the Millionaires for Humanity campaign in Amsterdam in August this year. Otherwise, I couldn't be born into millions. Just born. Nothing else. So... 
We are going to be continuing at patreon.com slash the boys cast. If you want to shop, pop over to boys, the boys cast.com. You can get a boys cast shirt, support the doll. We're so close to episode two of Bugman. Yeah, Bugman. we are so close to episode two. We get a little closer every week than we lose yep. people on the first, but we are, we do keep creeping closer, which is good news. Pull those shek, grab that crowbar, pull those shekels out. Redistribute some of that wealth yeah. around the Patreon. Tax me, daddy. Tax me, daddy. We got an expensive ass studio here. Tax us, daddy. <laughs> All right, peace. Later.